Okay, so thank you again for coming today to our leadership lunch series. Uh, today, we're gonna to be focused on understanding your leadership style. Um, one of the things that we are doing today is we are hosting our leadership lunch series in conjunction with uh, First Gen Week. And so I wanted to give a shout out to all of our first generation students who are with us today. Um, first Gen Week has been going on since Sunday and doing lots of different events throughout the week to celebrate, support, and prepare our first gen students. Um, and so I give an extra special welcome to uh, anyone who's joining us today who is who identifies as a first gen student. So welcome. Okay, so today's goals, um, we are going to uh, do some activities to help you discover your individual leadership style and preferences, um, understand how others' leadership styles impact group dynamics, and enhance your ability to work with people with different leadership styles. So one quick thing I would like to do for us as we warm up is if you could all take out a piece of scrap paper and write your signature on there, just with your you know, just, just sign your name. Everybody can quickly do that. All right, and I'm going to participate as well. All right, so I have my signature, okay. Now what I want you all to do is to switch your hand and I want you to try to do the same thing with your non-dominant hand. So if you're right-handed, Put that pen, pen in your other hand and try to sign your name using your non-dominant hand. Okay, is anybody brave enough to uh, to take to to show on their video and and show us what this looks like? I know I, I can start. I don't have a with that. Oh, fine. <laughs> All right, Jeff, yours looks the same. <laughs> they can scratch both ways, but it's there. Yeah. All right, anybody else want to show? Okay. Looking good, Elise. <laughs> James, I think I saw yours up there for a second before the green screen uh, took over. Nordy, let's try to see yours. Oh, the green oh, screen is kind of taken over. Oh, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, obviously, we were all able to do that. Um, one might look a little bit nicer than the other, but we were all able to use our other hand and still write our name. And so I wanted to use this as a quick warm up as we dive into talking about different leadership styles, because we're going to talk about you know, different, different types and kind of what your preference is, but that's not to say that it's all or nothing or that you don't have a little bit of everything. We could all switch to our left hand or our right hand or our non-dominant hand and still write our name, but it takes more energy and effort and it maybe isn't as more as comfortable as it would be if you were writing with your right hand or your, for me, my right hand, uh, for you, your dominant hand. Um, and so I want to use that as a, as a warm up as we dive into today, just so that you kind of enter with that frame of reference that um, just because your preference might be towards one style doesn't mean that that's your entire leadership style. Like we all have a little bit of everything. Uh, and you know, just like we're all able to write with either one of our hands, um, it's just that one takes a little bit more effort, one comes a little bit more naturally to us. All right, so um, we're gonna focus today on true colors. There are so many different um, inventories and practices out there uh, that talk about different leadership styles. Um, but in, in the interest of doing something through Zoom, um, doing something that can be easily done um, virtually, um, I thought that True Colors was kind of the best one to pick for today's purposes. Um, and so True Colors allows people to identify with four common personal leadership styles. Uh, most people identify with a primary uh, style and a secondary style, but as you'll see as we dive into the activity, little bits will likely show up for everybody. Um, it's designed to better understand yourself and others. Uh, it's used to promote the appreciation of individual differences, and it improves your ability to understand preferred style um, of others and work more effectively together as a team. All right, so if everybody could take out um, 
a sheet of scrap paper and I promise I'm going to make this uh, activity bigger. So don't, don't strain your eyes quite yet. Um, but what we're gonna do is I'm going to, um, when I advance to the next screen, it's, we have a few people coming in for the waiting room. So I'm gonna wait for them to join us. Um, okay, so basically the activity we're gonna do for True Colors uh, is what will help you determine what your leadership style is. And so uh, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the word clusters in each of the horizontal rows, um, and you are going to rank order the four choices in descending preference. So four is which word choice is most like you, and one would be the word clusters that are least like you. Um, kind of do whatever, you know, your instinct is, uh, don't, don't think too hard about it. Um, just kind of write down whatever comes naturally to you. So you're going to take each row at a time. And again, the next screen has this in, um, a little bit bigger, so you won't have to strain your eyes. Um, but for example, uh, for row one, I would jot down that, you know, I most identified with B. So I'm going to put four for B, three for C, two, and then one is what's least like me. Does that all make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the next, uh, the next slide. And if each of you can just make sure that you have your scrap paper and jot down on for each letter uh, what your preference is. So again, four is most like you and one is least like you. So you'll do that for each of the rows. All right, so I'm gonna um, pause our recording for a moment. Um, all right, so I'm going to resume our recording. So this way we can move on to the next step. Um, so now what you're going to do is you are going to transfer the number that you wrote for each letter um, and add them into this column. And the column with the highest total will indicate your preferred style. All right, so now take a few minutes to um, do some simple math. Um, I'll go ahead and pause the recording again while we do that. All right, so hopefully everybody was able to um, add up their totals for um, the numbers that corresponded with each of these letters to get their total for each category. Um, does anybody want to share what their highest uh, category was? I'll jump in. Sure. Uh, mine was uh, gold. Okay. And then did you have a close second or what was your, your second? Uh, gold was the highest. I actually had fours across the board there and my next one was green. Okay, very good. Gold was uh, was my highest as well with blue coming in as a second. I'm also gold blue. I'm gonna shift it up a little bit. I'm orange with my second being blue. Great, very good. So we will go into um, some more detail about what each of these types means. But before we do that, um, I wanted to have each of you kind of describe what your ideal environment is when working with others. So whether that's a group project for class, um, whether it's for a student organization or another team that you're a part of, maybe in a community organization or somewhere else at Stockton, um, what is your ideal environment when you're working with others? What do you need to thrive? What are the things that stress you out? Would anybody like to jump in and share? And if you're just thinking about it, that's okay too. <laughs> I know for me, I thrive best in my work environment when I have a little bit more structure and organization. Um, let's see if I need to quiet um, environment. Okay. Anyone else want to jump in and describe um, what there's quiet and focused? I thought that might have been a typo. <laughs> yeah, I've worked in a couple environments um, and uh, I, I like the structure as well, Lauren. Um, mm -hmm. I have some trouble in team situations sometimes when everybody's talking at once, it's kind of difficult for me to focus on a direction. Sure. Yeah, so just kind of having those clear directions and um, yeah, that focus environment. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wanna jump in? All 
All right, that's okay. We're, we're gonna move on and um, kind of go over each of the styles and think about kind of what your preferences are and if this seems to, to match up well with, uh, with um, what your preferences came out to be in the activity. All right, so in a nutshell, um, the, those of you who came out with orange as the strongest uh, type are more impulse oriented. It's a little bit of that, that just do it mentality. Um, gold is structure oriented. They like to be prepared um, and organized. Green uh, focuses on cognitive uh, oriented. They, they focus on the why behind why we do what we do. Um, and blue is relationship oriented. So kind of that, how does it make you feel? Worrying about the, you know, the team dynamics when it comes to um, relationships. All right, so we're gonna kind of dive in a little bit deeper for each color. Um, and, and kind of go over some characteristics. I'm not going to read every single word on the page, but basically for uh, those who have orange as their, uh, as their top, um, their, their strongest preference, uh, these are the risk takers, the ones who are a little bit more spontaneous. Um, they adapt when, you know, maybe plan A doesn't work. These are the plan B people who can kind of just step in and, um, and, and act on a moment's notice and kind of jump right in. Um, they are really good with change, and so they welcome change. These people were probably excited to come up with a new plan when we switched to uh, a fully remote or mostly remote environment. Um, and we're able to kind of troubleshoot and, and kind of keep that moving. Um, sometimes others can see orange as irresponsible, flaky, wishy-washy, um, that you know they're not able to stay on task as well, or they might disobey the rules. And again, this is just perspective. So things that um, that that tend to come out as characteristics, and then um, how others may view them. Um, so more little facts about orange, or or things that describe their personalities. So in childhood. Uh, these are the folks that may have had a difficult time fitting into an academic routine in school. Uh, they learn by doing and experiencing rather than just listening and reading. Um, at work, they tend to be a little bit more bored with structure and routine. Um, and they enjoy careers that allow them, you know, to be independent in what they do and to kind of create their own path. Um, as a leader, they expect quick action. They work in the here and now. Um, and again, they welcome change. They want to make it fun. Did any of you have orange as, as your top one? Nordia, you said it came up for you a little bit, right? Yes, it was my um, it was my strongest one. That's why I'm like- It laughing. was your strongest. Okay, I couldn't remember if you said it was your, your, your first or second. Does, yeah. does, does this sound, uh, does this sound <laughs> right for you? Um, not so much, but it might've been me. I'm pretty sure I, I probably put some numbers and some- <laughs> places um some of it in terms of you know welcome and change and things of that nature yeah i think can be accurate but i certainly would not consider myself spontaneous <laughs> or or any of the others but it's a fun exercise i'm curious to hear what the well, others are about. i was gonna say we'll, we'll we'll see how your number uh your number two color yeah let's describes see. you <laughs> i was strong in orange I was going to say, Jeff, I'm surprised this wasn't a top one for you. I would have put money on you being an orange. All right, so gold, um, loyal, dependable, prepared. These are the people who love to plan. They're detail oriented. Um, they enjoy rules and routine. Um, very punctual. There's a strong sense of right and wrong. Um, even as I'm reading this, I'm like how, how others view gold, uh, very rigid and controlling, um, sometimes you know, very rule bound and system bound to the point where maybe they don't seem as flexible as uh, some of the other people on the team. Um, and it could also be viewed as, as dull and boring because you know, they are kind of bound to, to the rules, the system, um, you know, and, and, and all those details. Um, in childhood, I had an easy time adapting into the education system. I wanted to follow the rules and regulations at school. Um, at work, my ability to handle details and work hard um, makes me the backbone of my organization. I provide stability and can maintain organization. I believe work comes before play, even if I need to work overtime to complete the task. 
Um, as a leader, Golds will expect punctuality and order. Um, they assume the right way to do things, seldom questions traditions. Um, it can take them a, pro, a longer time to initiate change because they are so bound by the rules that they kind of you know, want it to be orderly. They want it to be thoroughly planned out. Um, and they expect people to kind of play their roles and, and, and do their part, whether it's through a group project or um, a different role on a team. So Gold's in, 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 on the Zoom. Does this, uh, does this sound familiar? Um, for me, I would say mostly. Um, I do find myself, I'm flexible to change. So I, I disagree with that part of the goal, but most of the other things I'm pretty um, right on with the gold. Cool. And again, like we had said in the beginning, a lot of it is, um, you know, for the most part, what is comfortable for you. There's always going to be other parts that sneak in as well um, and other things that you can do. But I guess this, you know, if gold is coming up as, as highest for you, this is what um, is most comfortable. So you might not identify with every single one of those things um, because you'll always be a mixture of all four types. Um, it's just that the gold might come out a little bit more frequently than some of the others. Any other golds want to chime in? Or anybody who had gold? I, I had gold, but I think my columns might be off. <laughs> Not sure which column goes to which. The, uh, the first column that you put together was orange, second one was gold, third is blue, and fourth is green. Got it. All right, so we'll continue to, to go through the other colors. Um, so blue, again, these are the relationship focused folks. So they're warm, caring. Um, they like to communicate with the team. They're sincere, they're authentic. Um, they're, they're more creative um, and you know, willing to work tirelessly for a cause. They're encouraging of their teammates. Um, others tend to view the blue folks as um, over emotional, too trusting, talkative, soft, smothering at times because they are the people, people, people. <laughs> um, and, and they like to, to focus on kind of checking in and making sure everybody is okay. Um, in childhood, I reacted with great sensitivity to rejection and sought recognition. Um, I respond to encouragement rather than competition. At work, I have a strong desire to influence others so they may lead more significant lives. Um, oftentimes, blues will work in the arts, communication, education, and helping professions. Um, and um, they like to, to, to motivate others. As a leader, um, they expect others to, to be expressive with their feedback or their point of views. Um, they kind of assume the family spirit when working with others. Um, they work to develop others' potential. Uh, they encourage change through that human potential as well. Uh, so are there folks who uh, were blue showed up as one of the, uh, the top colors for you? Blue is, this, sorry, was somebody, ahead. blue was my second color and I'm actually in the education field. So, okay. That's interesting. So some of it is true for you. Was there somebody else who wanted to, uh, to jump in and share? It sounded like somebody else was unmuted. All right, so we have some comments in the chat about different types. All right, so we have one more to go. And so that is green. So let's talk about the greens uh, in the room for a minute. Uh, so greens tend to be analytical, inventive, logical. Uh, they like things to be perfect. And they're constantly changing their plan to kind of strive for perfection. Uh, so if there's a system in place where it could be improved, uh, the greens are the ones who are more likely to kind of investigate what could be done a little bit better with this system um, and, um, and, and work towards making it better. They like to find solutions. Um, they fl find flaws objectively because it's usually based in knowledge and research and, and facts. Um, and because of that, they can also be visionary because they're constantly looking for ways to make things better. Others can tend to view greens as an intellectual snob, arrogant, um, 
stingy with praise. Uh, they don't consider people in their plans sometimes because they're so focused on the facts, the evidence, and the knowledge. Um, but they do tend to remain calm uh, during, during times of change and, and as they pivot their plan. Um, in childhood, I appeared to be older than my years and focus on greater interests, achieving in subjects that were mentally stimulating. Um, impatient with drills and routine, questioned authority, found it necessary to respect teachers before I could learn from them. Um, at work, conceptual and independent thinkers, work is play for them. Uh, they're drawn to constant uh, challenge in careers. And they like to develop models, explore ideas, build systems uh, to satisfy their need for innovation. As a leader, they expect intelligence and competence from their teammates. Uh, they seek ways to improve their systems, analytical, and they're constantly in the process of change. Um, so are there folks who identified as green as one of their higher colors? And, and does this ring true for you? Green was my number one and I feel it, <laughs> I feel it fits. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked as an analyst, so it's kind of funny how that lines up. Yeah, absolutely. But like you say, work is play. You do, you, you do what you love. Yeah, absolutely. Any other greens want to chime in? Someone who had green as their either their first or their their primary or their secondary color? I'm a second green, and that definitely fits. I I would agree with that. <laughs> green was my yeah. highest. Green was your highest least? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Nice. What was your second color? Orange. Orange. Very cool. Good to know since we are on the same team. <laughs> All right. So here are some tips because obviously you're going to uh, be working with people who are different types than you. So here's a few tips um, for working with the oranges on your team and the blues on your team and the golds and the greens. Um, not that you have to kind of change your style, but just little things that you can do to um, just kind of make sure that, that everything is flowing smoothly and to be, um, I guess, more appreciative of others' work styles. So for oranges, um, be adventurous and optimistic, be active with them, don't slow them down um, and be energetic and ready to go. So orange for me is my, um, my weakest link, um, but I really appreciate having oranges on my team because when plan A doesn't work after all of the planning and detailing and <laughs> everything that I did as a gold, I really rely on my oranges to be energetic about what plan B could be, um, especially if it's not what in my head was the right thing or the, the thing that I had planned. Um, and so, you know, I really love having a mixture of all these different types on my team because I feel like we, we each bring something different and unique to, uh, to keep everything going. Um, for blues, spend quality one-on-one -on -one time with them. Um, listen and be supportive, praise their imagination and creativity. So when they're coming up with new ideas, uh, you know, you really want to be intentional to make sure that they're heard. Uh, for golds, uh, they, they value timeliness and, and efficiency. So be on time, do what you say you will do, um, and try to be extra organized and efficient when working with goals and projects. Um, for greens, give them projects that challenge their problem solving abilities, respect their need for independence, um, and give them time to process information because again, they're, they're going to be, you know, researching and looking into the details of things and, um, you know, trying to explore new ways of, of changing things to, to make it better and to improve the way that you're doing things. All right, so I want everybody just to kind of think and reflect for a little bit. Um, on this activity. So how can this knowledge help your interactions with people on a regular basis? Um, can you think of examples where maybe uh, the differences in personality styles and leadership styles based on this model have been the cause of conflict in a situation that you were in? So again, maybe it was um, a class project, maybe it's your student organization, maybe it's um, your team at work. Um, and what are some things that you can do in the future to prevent conflict based on differences? So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this. So this way I'm recording, um, but these are, are definitely good questions to, to think about and keep in mind as you are in your group setting. 
All right, so um, that kind of brings us to the to the end of our session today. Um, there are so many different uh, leadership inventories out there. Um, it's just that not all of them were conducive to facilitating through um, a Zoom webinar like this. Um, but there's the Myers Briggs. There's Strengths. Um, there is um, the uh, the LPI, there's lots of different inventories out there that can kind of help you learn and grow uh, when it comes to your leadership style. So, you know, we're definitely going to be continuing our leadership lunch series into the spring. And I encourage you to um, kind of definitely follow along and, and come to our leadership lunch. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing a session on selling your skills as a student leader. So for those of you, it's open to everybody, but if you are um, involved with a student organization or you hold uh, a leadership position um, on campus or off campus, um, the, uh, the Career Ed Education Development Center is going to be talking about ways to um, you know, revamp your resume and your cover letter and being able to highlight some of these skills um, in an interview or job setting, job search setting. Uh, so definitely try to, to come out to that next Thursday at noon. And then uh, our last one for the semester is going to be the week after Thanksgiving on pathways to activism for college students. And so that's going to be led by our, um, our service learning and civic engagement office, um, talking about just how to, how to use your leadership skills in the community. Um, are there any questions or additional reflections um, before we wrap up? Strengths finder test is highly recommended. Absolutely. Yeah, we love strengths. We would have done it, but it's so hard to squeeze in an hour. I know, and, and it's hard to facilitate um, through Zoom. So we decided to pick one that was uh, easy for this presentation format, but uh, we are definitely hoping to integrate some more uh, next semester. So I hope that this was helpful for all of you. Um, let me, before we close today, let me go ahead and uh, put the attendance link in here. Um, There's also a quick assessment link um, that we would love for you to take. It is very brief, so we encourage you to take it. <laughs> Perfect, thank you, Nordia. Sure, no problem. I'm gonna put the link for the attendance. Basically, as long as you're logged into um, Osprey Hub, um, go ahead and click on that and we will mark you as attended and that will be captured on your um, Osprey Advantage co-curricular transcript. Um, and then Nordia just put the assessment link in there as well. Uh, so if you could just answer those few questions um, about this session today, it will be really helpful for us to have some feedback. All right, so thank you all again so much for coming. Um, I will, I'm going to stop the recording, but stay on in case anybody has questions or wants to um, just kind of reflects a little bit more, but thank you again for coming today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, have a wonderful day.